time we've had today, amen? God is an amazing God, and He deserves all the praise that we give Him. Man, it's time for our, our kids to go to children's church. So kids, come on down up to sixth grade. All of our kids, come on down. We have the ladies over here to help you, and they're going to take you on upstairs. So everybody, come on down and be right over here in the corner, and they're going to take you upstairs. Now remember, uh, parents... That when the service is over, that the kids will not be coming back into here. You will pick up your kids across the hall in the uh, fellowship hall. So that's what, you'll pick them up as soon as the service is over. They'll be down there waiting on you. So uh, what, a, what a great sight it is to see so many kids coming to First Baptist West. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you. You guys have fun today, all right? Well, today we're going to continue with the idea of serving We've been connecting to serve in 2021. Today, our, our focus is again back on serving. Now, if you remember or you paid any attention last week, you will know that the text that we're about, I'm about to share with you is the exact same text as last week, all right? Some of you say, I wouldn't have noticed the difference anyway, and that's okay because I'm not offended. As I was sharing in the first service, there's a lot of times people come to me and say, hey, pastor, you remember a couple of weeks ago, that sermon you preached? And I'll go, well, you better give me something to remind, remind me because I probably don't remember that one. So they may tell me a little something, and sometimes it'll click. Sometimes they'll say, no, you better give me a little bit more. I need a little more than that. So I'm not offended if you go, well, I, I don't remember that text being preached last week, but it is. Now, I want to tell you, as I also shared with them, it's the same text, but not the same sermon. Amen. So you can mark that down. It's the same text as last week, but I'm not going to give you the same sermon. I'm reminded of a, of a, a, a church that they were going to call a pastor, and they brought him in view of a call, and he, uh, man, he preached a sermon that was like none other. Man, the church was impressed with him. He had everything down. It was so well put together, and they enjoyed it so much that they said, man, this is the guy that we're supposed to call as our pastor. So they voted unanimously to call him, and so he accepted. And so a few weeks later, he, he finally comes. He and his family arrive on the, on the field, and so he's going to preach his first sermon as the pastor of the church. Well, guess what? He preaches the exact same sermon that he preached when he came in view of a call. Now, that kind of took a few people and went, well, no, wait a minute. That was the same sermon he preached. Well, you know what? Maybe he realizes that there may be some different people here because just like in most churches that if everybody showed up on the same Sunday, the place would be packed, amen? So they're thinking, well, maybe he was preparing that message and he wanted uh, the others that may have missed it for them to hear it. So they went, okay, that's all right. So it was a pretty good sermon and they, they enjoyed it again. Well, comes his second Sunday as pastor, third Sunday to preach, and guess what? He preaches the exact same sermon again. Same point, same story, same joke, same everything. It was the same sermon. Well, this kind of now made them all go, well, wait a minute. What's going on? All right, he's new. He hadn't done this much. Maybe he won't do it again. Comes to the next Sunday, gets up, preaches, and guess what? The same sermon. He hadn't changed anything. Same one. Now this is the fourth time they've heard it. So this gets the deacons a little fired up. And they said, you know what? We're going to meet with this pastor. So they bring him in and sit him down and say, Pastor, say, you know, we, we really enjoyed that sermon the first time you preached it. Man, you, you really nailed it. And we have enjoyed it the second time. But now the third and fourth time, we, we've just got to ask. What's the deal? You're preaching the same exact sermon over and over and over. When, when, pastor, are you going to give us a different sermon? The pastor looked at him and said, when you start doing what the first sermon said. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you, same text, not the same sermon. Amen. But we're going to be looking today at the idea of outreaching service. If you'll remember in the book of Luke 14, 23, it was the story of the master telling the servant that there's a great banquet that you need to go and to reach people. And he went and all the invited guests, if you'll remember, began to make excuses as to why they couldn't make it. 
So he comes back and he tells the master, he says, okay, then go out into the area and get as many people as you can get. Just talk to all of them. Doesn't matter who they are. Get them to come in. So he goes out and he gets them to come in. And he tells him in, in, in 14, 22, he says, but uh, master said, I've done everything that you've said, but there's still a lot of room. And then in 14, 23 is when he says, all right, then he says to the servant, go out now into the highways and the hedges, compelling them to come in that, they're my, that my table might be full. That's 14.23. That's what we talked about last week is the compelling service, the begging service. So what we're going to be looking at today is using that same text, looking at some ideas about the actual outreaching service, that where we take all that we've learned, that we've taken since the first Sunday in January, as I've been preaching about connecting to serve in 2021, that we connect to God Then as we connect to God, then we connect to the local church. We connect to a local body where we can then uh, be joined together with people. And then the third one was that we connect to the people, that we need to be going out now making connections to those who need Jesus. And now we're talking about serving those, going out and doing it. So as we look at this text today, it is again to, to outreach. It is to take everything that we've been talking about all that you've been listening to, and now it's time, my friends, it's time for the church to get busy. Amen? It's time for us to do all of those things that you've been hearing me talk about for this whole year. Everything that we've been hearing, everything that we've been experiencing, everything that we've been feeling, it's now time to go out. It's now time to make this service real, to make it happen, to do what we're supposed to do. Now, this month, this month, we have things that we've been caught talking about, praying about. I've been sharing it with the leadership. I've been sharing it with the staff. I've been sharing it with the deacons and the Sunday school teachers. It's the idea of the thought of September outreach explosion. It is that time that we take everything again that we've been talking about and now make it happen. It's to explode, to go out, to, to not stay confined into this little spot, not praying that God would send people to us because the great banquet is ready it's all prepared for people so that we pray that God would bring them into us it is now time for us to break out it is time for us to go out and to share the message of Jesus that we are to reach those we are now called starting today to be the servant to go out the banquet is ready everyone's prepared it's now time for us to make those connections it's no longer time to just just hang out it's no longer time to just hear what's going on but to actually begin to do what God has called us to do so for the whole month of September we're not doing it just September and then ending at the end of the month but the whole focus for September is reaching out going out and as I've shared with you I've been talking now to the staff for for since January about this we've been talking to the 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 deacons I've been now spent the last two months talking to your Sunday school leaders about this outreach explosion, what it's all about. And I want to share with you today, as we look into this text, what I believe my goal that God has placed on my heart for First Baptist West to be able to do during this month, that not just that we stop, but that, my friends, it springboards us into something that we're going to continue to do far past the end of September. And that is to reach people for Jesus. And what is their goal? The outreach explosion goal is this. It is first to encourage and promote outreach to prospects through our classes through our, and our ministries. In other words, it's time to leave from here and go out and make connections to people who need Jesus. It's time to go out and to reach those who are prospects, those who don't have a church, those who may have not been in church in, in their church for a long time, but we make connections to people who need it. This is the master telling us, First Baptist West, servants, go out now and compel people that you come in contact with, that they might come in, that the, my table might be full. So it's to reach those who don't know Jesus. But the second goal is to encourage and promote the same thing, outreach to people who may have lost connection to our church, 
Maybe they've been here in the past. Maybe, maybe they've not been here for a long time. Maybe you've been missing them. Maybe you haven't been missing them. But today, you begin to look around and, and you see that, man, there's somebody that I haven't seen in our church in a long time. There's somebody that hadn't been in our small group in a long time. There's somebody that hadn't been in our connect group in a long time. We need to reconnect with them. We need to go out and let them know that we've missed them because we haven't been seeing them in church. Now, one thing about a Baptist church that makes outreach to people who are not here easy? Because sometimes you might go, well, how do we know who's not here? Well, you know how we do in a Baptist church. Everybody sits in the same spot. Amen. So you can look around and you can automatically go, I bet you can look around some people right now and go, oh, so-and-so's not here. How do I know they're not here? Because their seats are empty. They're not sitting back there because we don't do that in the Baptist church. Amen. If they were here, they're in their seat. So what we're looking at is to make a connection to those people who may not be here. They may not have been here for a while, and we haven't even thought about them. But today, the master calls out to us as his servants, go out and compel those people to come back. Go out and make connection to them. Let them know that you've been missing them. Let them know that they're missing some good stuff, and you would love to see them here again. Make that connection. That's part of the outreach to those who we know have never been here, but also to those that we know haven't been here in a while. We need to get to thinking about them again. As I've shared with you, I've talked to the Sunday school leaders already for two months now about this. And so the third goal with that we've talked about is to have special events during the month of September that will help bring people to the groups, to the ministries, or to the worship. In other words, what you're, I'm wanting you to do and I, what I want to encourage you to do is to go out and, and to bring people to your, to your connect groups. Bring them to your small groups. Because sometimes it's kind of difficult and almost intimidating to ask someone, hey, would you come to our Sunday school class? But what I'm encouraging your leadership to do, and I want you to ask your leadership in your Sunday school classes, to what are you doing? What are we doing that will allow us to say, hey, we're having this event why don't you come and go with us? It's going, to be, it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to have a meal. We're going to have a breakfast. We're going to have this. We're going to have that. Come on and, and, and see. Come and see what we're doing and invite them to come to be a part of that. Maybe it's not just your Sunday school group, but maybe it's your, maybe it's your connect group. And I know we have connect groups. We have new ones starting up this month as well. Encourage someone to come to your connect group. But also then through your whole ministry, maybe it's the children's ministry, preschool ministry, maybe it's the youth ministry, maybe it's, it's adult ministry, men's ministry, women's ministry. Invite them, do events, do something that would be appealing to someone that you can go to them, hey, we've got this going on, why don't you come? I want to invite you as my friend, I want to invite you as my guest to come to this event. And then maybe even to the worship services. But the master told the servant, go, compel them to come. Reach out. That's what we call outreach in the church. But the fourth one is to see First Baptist West grow in spirit. As we open up, man, I, I, I don't know, and I hope you're feeling what I've been feeling, man, but God's spirit's been moving in our church, amen? I, I enjoy, man, our worship services have been amazing. Last Sunday night, I pray that you were here, and if you weren't here, man, you missed God's spirit moving heavily on our people. What a great Sunday service we had last, last Sunday night, amen? And I want, I'm telling you, God's spirit's moving. And so it's for us to grow in the more, listen, when we begin to open ourselves up to God, when we begin to do what he's asked us to do, when we begin to make that connection to him, then there will be a great spirit moving in our church. And that's an exciting place to be, amen, when God's spirit is moving on the hearts of people. That's fun to be around, amen. So that's our goal that as we do that. But also that, 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 that we would grow in people. Now, right about here is when a lot of people, sometimes even in the church, that get mad at the preacher when we talk about growing in number and say, well, there you go. That's all you care about is getting people more numbers in the church. Well, absolutely, we are concerned about getting more numbers in the church. Why? Because the more people that are here, guess what's happening? The more people that are hearing the gospel. 
So absolutely, I will not apologize that I encourage you to bring someone to church, to bring someone here. Not, and we're going to get into it in just a few moments, not that we can go, woo, look what we did. But my friends, for every person that's sitting here, for every chair that's no longer empty, there's somebody having a chance to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're growing in that so that we can have more people coming to Jesus, but also grow in excitement. Man, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I, I love when people get saved. Amen? Amen. Doesn't, that kind of, doesn't that kind of get your heart pumping? I love when people get saved. I love when we have a baptismal service, don't you? Because every time we baptize somebody, you know what that means? That means there was somebody who gave their heart to Jesus. There's someone's life who has changed. There's someone now who's not going to spend an eternity separated from God. Folks, I'm telling you, that excites me. I get excited whenever I see people coming through the doors and they're happy. And I, I get excited when I see you visiting with each other, man. As a pastor, I see the members welcoming and greeting. Folks, I'm telling you, there's something exciting about that. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I know you don't understand this, but I get kind of excited. Amen. I like excitement. And there's something about that that just thrills me when I see people are coming to Jesus. So that's the goal for outreach. For the whole month of September. And not there. September is not the one and only thing. September is the catalyst to get us to move forward from there, from this point on. That we continue it in October, November, December, January of next year. This time next year, still having outreach explosion. Still having people come to Jesus. Still having new people show up. Still making an impact on people. That's what the master said to the servant. Go out and compel them to come into my house because I have a banquet prepared for them. They don't understand it, but it is something amazing. So when we talk about outreach, now now I want to get into my sermon. Set your clocks now, because if you say, the sermon went long. No, it didn't. That was the introduction. All right? That's the introduction. Now, start your stopwatches. My sermon begins now. Now I've got 30 minutes. Amen? (laughs) Just kidding. Just kidding. Outreach that we need to understand. When we talk about outreach, when we talk about outreach explosion, folks, it's not about us. That's what we've got to understand. Anything that we do to reach people for Jesus, it can't be about us. The master was not concerned about himself. You've got to understand, when the master prepared the banquet, it was at his great cost. He didn't ask anything from anybody. He didn't ask for admission. He didn't ask for recognition. He didn't ask to be held up. He didn't ask anything. He said, just come in. So outreach explosion, my friend, is not about us, has nothing to do with us. It's not about our convenience. It's not about when we can do it. Outreach, if I'm going to truly be that servant that God has called here in this text, If the master has called us to be his servant, then it's not about my convenience. He didn't say to the servant, when you get around to it or when your calendar is clear, when everything else looks good, when all your family stuff is settled, then I want you to go. He said, no, I want you to go now. So it was at his expense and it was at the servant's call that he went out. So my friends, listen to me. It is not about when we feel comfortable to do it, when we feel like it's okay to do it, when I don't have a whole lot more going on i just shared a sermon just a few weeks ago about convenient service and it's not only when it's convenient it is when god has called us and my friends can i tell you jesus is coming again and it is time for us to go out and begin to compel people to come in not at our convenience not when it's good but at all times my friends it's not about convenience can't be about me because if it's about me it's going to be when i feel like it when i think it's good when i it's done the way i want it it's all about me But listen, outreach can't be about us. But it's not about our pride either. It's not about me being able to go, Woo, look what we did. Look what we've got. Look how we worked. It's not about the pride. Can I tell you, the master was going to be the master if no one else showed up. He was still, in other translations, it's the king. The king was the king whether people showed up or not. 
So it's not about what we can say about us. It's not about that I can say, whoo, we went to two services. Whoa, look at us. As a matter of fact, I joke with people, man, if we get 300 more seats somehow magically appear in this place, I'd love to go back to one service. Amen. But we can't. But praise God, we're not doing it. Oh, we didn't go to two services because I could walk around and go, woo, we're First Baptist West doing two services now. Look at us. No, it's not about my pride. It's not about people to be able to say, look what we've got here. Look what we're able to do here. It has nothing to do with our pride because, listen to me, God is still God whether we serve him or not. So it has nothing to do about our pride, but it also has nothing to do about our being right. It's not about me going out and trying to show everybody, hey, we're right in what we're saying. You're wrong. See? Ha, ha, ha. It has nothing to do about that. As a matter of fact, it has, I don't care that people think I'm right. I don't care. All I care about is that they know Jesus as their Savior. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about them. So if we begin to, to, to want to gripe about A program called Outreach Explosion because we're going to do it so that we can get more people coming to our church and our church can get bigger. No, 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 no. Has nothing to that. It's not about us being able to go tell anyone how much things have happened at First Baptist West. It's that we realize that there's a great need for God in the land. That people need Jesus. And we're going to compel them to come in. So outreach explosion is never about us. The second thing about it is outreach is about reaching others. That's all it is. It's reaching people for Jesus. That's all we're to be focused on. Because here's what we're doing is we're reaching others. What we want to do is, first of all, we want to lead them to an amazing God. That's why we do what we do. We want to lead them to an amazing God. Can I tell you today, we have an amazing God. Amen. He he is so amazing. The things that he has done for us is amazing. The way he loves us is amazing. What he has given to us through Jesus Christ is amazing. Everything about God is amazing. My friends, listen to me. I wish and I pray that we in the church could somehow get back the awesomeness of God in our minds and our thoughts of saying, God, you are an awesome God. You have been so good to me. God, you are awesome. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 10, 17, listen to what it says. For the Lord your God is God of gods, the Lord of lords. Listen, the great God, mighty and what? Awesome. We're leading them to that God. He is an awesome God. He is greater than anything in the world. He is greater than anything the world has to offer. And my friends, outreach is nothing more than trying to bring them to that awesome, awesome God. And he says that who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. That's how awesome he is. The Bible tells us in Psalm 8, 3 and 4, he says, man, when I consider your heavens... The work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, then I think, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Man, when we pause for just a moment, if we could somehow pause for just a second and, and think about what does it really mean to come into God's presence? Man, this is, the, this is the being that created the world. He spoke it into existence. He has the power. He's been an eternal God. He will be an eternal God. He is a God of love and peace and joy and comfort. Man, and we get to be in his presence. How amazing is God? Folks, we got to get that back in the church somehow, amen, to say, God, you are an amazing God. God, you give us amazing grace because that's how good he is. So outreach is about bringing people to that amazing God, but not only that amazing God, but to lead them to an amazing life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. We want life. We're going to get it through Jesus Christ. I hear the world all the time say, well, I I, I don't want to do that because I, I want to live life, man. I want to live life. Listen to me. You're not living life apart from Jesus because Jesus said, I am the life. You only have life through me. Amen. He says, I want you to come to this amazing life that I have. 
The Bible tells us in John 10, 10, the thief does not come but to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but I have come that you might have what? Life, but not only that you might have life, but do you, you and I, if we come to Christ, we can have an abundant life. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that tell you that abundant life means that if you claim on the name of Jesus, you'll be rich. If you claim on the name of Jesus, you'll always be healthy. If you claim on the name of Jesus, everything you ever want will be given to you. All the worldly stuff is at your hands and your fingertips. All you got to do is name it, claim it, and believe. Folks, that's not what abundant life means. That's a lie straight from hell. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That abundant life is this. It's life in its abounding fullness. That you will be full. You will be complete. There will be nothing missing. That everything. Jesus said, I have come to meet all of your needs. Not all of the, the give you all the money you want. All the houses you want, all the cars you want, all the jewels you want, all this you want. No, he says, I've come to make your life full. I've come to make you feel complete. That's the abundant life is the fullness of joy. Man, have joy even in difficult circumstances. In the most difficult times of our lives, we can still have joy. We can have peace. But also not only that, but he says that the abundant life is the abounding fullness of strength of mind. In other words, the clarity of thinking. He says, I want, I want to clear your mind and let you see things as they really are. I will allow you to see things as I see them. Folks, I know I've told you so many times since I've been pastor here that the world doesn't make sense to a Christian. The things of this world doesn't make sense to someone who's in the, with the mind of Christ, that we have fellowship with him and he is working in us. That's why we look around and we get confounded by the things of this world. How many times have you looked around at the things the world's doing and you said, hey, folks, that don't make sense to me. Raise your hand if you, if you said that. The things don't, aren't making sense. Do you know why? Because God is wanting to work through you to give you an abundant life, which is clear thinking, which is the strength of mind that you don't fall for the nonsense of the world because the closer you get to God the less sense the world makes but now listen the closer you get to God the less you it's the less sense you make to the world because the world doesn't get you either but the God wants to have us an abundant life that strength of mind but also that body and soul. Man, he wants us to be full. He wants us to be complete. He wants us to get, he wants us to have all that we need. And all that we need, my friend, is fulfilled through the name of Jesus. And he says, go out and bring people into that amazing life. Let them have what you have. Let them experience what you've experienced. That's why we do it. That's why we do all the stuff we do. That's why we go out and have outreach, to bring them in to an amazing God, to help lead them to an amazing God, but also lead them to an amazing life. But now listen, it doesn't stop there. It's like one of those infomercials, but wait, there's more. Amen? There's more. Because not only that, we'll, he will bring and lead them to an amazing eternity everlasting life in eternity that's amazing eternity uh, listen the thing we've got to understand is this we are all made as eternal beings amen now this body this body's not eternal amen and i'm reminded every year as i shared with you last week as i celebrated my birthday every year i'm reminded man this old body not eternal. This old body can't do what it used to do. Amen? So my body's not eternal, but our spirit, we were made. When God breathed life into man, he breathed an eternal existence. Now, the question is not, are we going to exist forever? The question is, where will we exist forever? We will not exist in this body forever. We're one day going to leave this body. Every person, let's, when Jesus comes even, we're going to leave this body. This body will be transformed. But where will we go? Where will our spirit go? Will it go to a heaven? 
or will it go to an eternity separated from him, which is called hell? Can I tell you, my friends, they are both real places. They, vo- they truly exist. So God has given us through Jesus an amazing eternity. This is not all there is. That when we are separated from this body, we're going to be in the presence of the Lord or in separation from the Lord. It's that simple. So we have for us, through Jesus, an amazing eternity. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, but it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Can I tell you this, that my friends, none of us can truly ever imagine what heaven's really like. Oh, we've done depictions of it. And most of the time, the depictions that we have of heaven, eh. I don't want to be sitting around playing a harp on a cloud for eternity. Amen? I don't believe God's going to bring a calmness to me all of a sudden in eternity. I believe I'm going to be like this. Amen? And this doesn't sit around on a cloud playing a harp all day. Amen? All my staff go, amen. Yeah, we know that. My family will go, amen. But the Bible says that we can't even imagine the eternity that waits us. It is awaiting us right now. So when we depart from this body, Paul says that when I leave this body, I am absent from the body, but I am present with the Lord. I have an eternity waiting on me. Man, and it is as real as you and I sitting here today. So we have prepared for us an amazing eternity if we know Jesus. As a matter of fact, we do get a little piece of what it's like. Look with me, if you will, in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 21. It says, And I heard the loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of of God is with men. And he... He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be their God. Oh, here's where it gets really good. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And in that place of eternity, there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. What former things is he talking about? All the lists that he had here, the pain and the sorrow and the death and the crying and the hurting and all of these things, those will be gone, my friend. They will not be there for us in eternity. We will have an eternity of where we're in the presence of God Almighty, and we'll be able to praise him and sing praises to him and fellowship together and be with our loved ones who have gone on before us. All of that, listen to me, all of that is way us today if we depart from this life but it is only through Jesus and now he says go church you who have that waiting on you you who know it's coming you who are banking on it coming go now go out into the highways and the hedges and the byways and you compel them to come in so that you can bring them to an amazing God you can bring them to an amazing life you can bring them to an amazing eternity go out and tell them because they need to hear what you already have Go, because I've got a great banquet that is not about me. It is for them. I prepared it at no cost for them. All they have to do is believe, and it's up to you to go and to tell them. That, that is what's waiting on us. Folks, that has nothing to do with me. Has nothing to do with my pride. Has nothing to do with my ego. Has nothing to do with my abilities. It's all about him. And it's all about them. So I pray that as we start September Outreach Explosion, that we will be so mindful of what the master told the servant to go do. Go compel them to come in. Because I have a great, great, awesome banquet ready for them. That That's what September Outreach Explosion is encouraging. Go. I'd like everybody to bow your head as we get ready now to step into the invitation time. Everybody with your head bowed and your eye closed. Everybody at home, if you would just pay very close attention to what I'm about to say. I want the praise team to come on back up. And my friend, listen to me. As we step into this time, 
This is the time that we respond to everything you felt in this service, even you at home. This is the time for you to respond to everything you've heard, everything you felt. Now's the time to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to go. Yes, Lord, I will compel. Yes, Lord, I will bring them to an awesome God, to an awesome life, to an awesome eternity. I want to bring them because, God, I thank you that you have given me that as well. And so I want to give them what I already have. But I want to ask you this, my friend, first and foremost, and you at home as well, Is there anyone here today that's sitting in this room or sitting at home, you'd say, Pastor, I'm not sure that I'm saved. I'm not sure that I have that eternity waiting on me. I don't, there's never been a time that I've given my heart to Jesus. If you're here today, if you're at home and you've thought that, that's been in your mind, then I I want you to pray. Right now, I want you to, if you believe with all your heart that God truly can save you today and you know you need it, would you cry out, God, forgive me. I need you in my life today. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I I know that I, I, I feel empty. I feel like there's nothing right. I feel, God, that there's an emptiness in me and I need to be fulfilled. And God, the only way I know to do it is through Jesus Christ. So I ask you today, God, would you forgive me of my sins? I surrender myself to you, God. I claim you as the Savior of my life. God, come into my life today. Make me new today. Make me new. If you're here today and you prayed that prayer, or you're at home and you prayed that prayer, Man, I want you to know that God has come and he has saved you because you've asked him, you've claimed him. And I want to celebrate with you. So if you're here today and you prayed that prayer and you know today, Pastor, just now I received Jesus into my life. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to ask you to come to me. But if you'd do me a favor and just so I can celebrate with you and I can pray with you. Again, with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one's looking. Would you just say, Pastor, I did that today. Just raise your hand very quickly and put it right back down. Pastor, I did that today. And if you're at home and you prayed that prayer, then I'm going to ask you to call the church and let us know. I want to be praying for you as well today. All right, here you are. You say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. But I I feel a burden on me. I feel the weight of this world. Satan has beaten me down. And I feel empty. I feel alone. But I know I have Jesus. But man, the world is just beating on me. And I need renewed. I need a renewal in my spirit. If you do that, then all I want you to do is I want you to first say, God, thank you for saving me. I know I'm saved. But God, I need the renewal in my spirit this morning. I need to breathe. I need you to breathe on me. God, let me feel the relieving spirit of, and the burdens. He says, come to me if you are burdened and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I'll take off that yoke of the world that's heavy. And I will, the yoke that I put on you is light and tender and loving. And, and, and that's what I, I will help you through this. Man, you just pray that to him today. Pray, God, breathe your spirit in me. Renew your spirit in me. Create a right heart in me, oh God. Would you do that right now? And be renewed in the spirit. And then lastly, would you pray, God, help me go and bring people to what I have. Help me go. Put someone on my heart today. God, that I can go to them. And I can compel them to come to an amazing God, an amazing life, and an amazing eternity. Would you come today? So if God's speaking to your heart, whatever it is, man, know that I'm praying for you. Know that if the altars are open, if you need to come, maybe take someone by the hand and say, hey, would you go pray with me? Or come down, I'll pray with you. You at home, call the office. Someone, right now, someone's waiting to talk to you. We're not leaving anybody empty today. You have somebody, and let's do it now. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we sing this next song, Lord, might we be able to enter into a true time of worship and experiencing you? 
Father, I pray if there's anyone that made a decision or needs to make a decision, whichever way it is, Lord, that they would come today, that they'd respond to your call right now. And Father, those who are ready, those who you have spoken to, and Father, they're ready that they we'll all stand in just a moment and we'll sing this to you as we get ready to close out our service today. God, what an amazing God you are. What an awesome life you've given us. And Lord, we look forward to that wonderful eternity. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Church, would you stand with me now as we get ready to sing? If you need to come, would you come this morning?